Hello you beautiful people, it is Tooth here, Tooth Decay. So we are at London's iconic King's Cross station, which many of you may know is right opposite London St Pancras. What are we doing here? Well, we're going off to a mystery destination up north. We are going to the birthplace of Paddington Bear, the toy, with surprising links maybe to a certain petrol head turned farmer. So let's crack on and see where we get to. Right folks, we made it onto the train, so we've got a couple of hours now, it's quite nice. It's a um, fairly modern train, LNER Azuma, and it's also pretty quiet today, which is nice. So I'm going to get a bit of shut eye and I will catch up with you in a bit. Right folks, so if you didn't guess it, we are in Doncaster. Yes, it's the home of Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson's mum and dad had a factory called the Bear Factory. And in the Bear Factory, they made the very first ever Pad it and bear. Of course, you've also got the world's oldest race track here, horse racing track. And this is the birthplace of the modern toilet, invented by a man known as no other than Thomas Crapper. Yes, Thomas Crapper invented the modern flushing toilet right here in Doncaster. Things you didn't know, eh, folks? So, Doncaster, we've got a couple of days here. We are going to go and see what it's got to offer. Latest potatoes, off your pot. Right, folks, so I've just got off the bus here. Uh, uh, Bawtree, which is the little village I'm staying in tonight. It was about 25 minute bus ride from Bradford, uh, Bradford. It was about 25 minute bus ride from Doncaster Interchange, which is right next to the station. Uh, it cost me two pounds and it's about nine and a half mile, which isn't bad given that, what did, what did I pay this morning? I paid three pounds to go a three mile trip in Southeast England. And just over here, is the hotel that I'll be staying in tonight, the Crown Hotel. So I'm actually up here on a bit of work. I've got a little visits to do this afternoon and then depending on whether I make contact with a person or not, I might have a couple more visits tomorrow. If I don't have the visits tomorrow, then I will be out and about in Doncaster itself, showing you what's going on. Now, I've got to walk up here just across the busy road. So I'm going to give you a little shot of what's going on in the high street because there's quite a bit going on. There's a uh, Another couple of little pubs and restaurants just there. Um, I've already passed the little Sainsbury's locals just back up towards that church at the back there. And there was a, a steakhouse as well. So loads going on. Let's have a little look around. Let's have a little look around up the high street as we go. It's quite a pretty little village as it goes. Like I said, that's the Crown Hotel where I'll be staying tonight. Nice butchers there, sausage champion. Proper old school soft furnishing shop. You got another pub here, a traditional free house called the Turnpike. Quite pleased there's a few places to get a beer because I think it was about £6.75 for a pint when I looked on the hotel restaurant menu. But Curry House. So Another interior design shop there. And a little shopping centre. Over there you've got another wine bar restaurant. We've got a townhouse, I don't know if that's open or not. Another little bar there. Hair salon. Like I say, quite a lot going on in quite a small little town, little village. There's a pharmacy over there that I've missed. Got a hair and beauty place there, a tanning place, little deli. Oh, look at that, Havana cigar specialist. I do like a nice cigar. I might have to have a little runs in there. Right, for now, folks, I'm going to go and check into my hotel get out and do the little bit of work that I've got to do and then I'll pop back and do a room review for you but for now I'm going to go and check in to the Crown Hotel at Bawtree in Doncaster Right folks, so this is my room it's room number 116 on the ground floor at the Crown Hotel in Bawtree, Doncaster so you can see over here we've got this 
decent enough sized wardrobe, which there's loads of hangers in there. You've got an iron and an ironing board. There's a good sized double window right here. You've got a couple of little windows at the top that open, but you are on the ground floor. Um, so somebody could get in those, make sure you lock those before you go out. And then over here, there's a writing desk with a mirror and a chair, and you've got a little TV just over here. Here at the desk, you've got another two plug sockets, but no USB. There's a good sized double bed. It's really kind of comfy. And you've got that lovely mirror up on the wall there. No plug sockets by the bed, but you do have the telephone there, down here. The all important biscuits. You're in my good books forever and proper Yorkshire tea. So overall, a pretty spacious room. And then just to the left of the front door, you've got the bathroom. In here, we've got mirror, sink, bath, shower over it, and a toilet. Functional. Right folks, so it's the next day. I've just woken up. Um, I did wake up several times in the night and I just want to check something on the bed in a minute. Also I had a, a bit of a weird experience while I was uh, half awake and half asleep, but less said about that, the better. Um, I really felt like somebody poked me in the back and it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I had a look afterwards and apparently this place is supposed to be haunted, but I think that's probably more likely confirmation bias and a couple of beers. But anyway, let's have a quick look at this bed and let me just see if I can work out if, if it's right what I'm thinking about. Right, so what it feels like is that this was really unforgiving. And it is, look, that's solid. So there's nothing sprung underneath that at all. It's just like sleeping on the mattress on a wooden board. Uh, and that's probably why I kept waking up in the middle of the night where I was aching because I've been in that position for so long and had to keep turning over. Got back off to sleep pretty quick. Um, but let's just say, I mean, look, I went to bed at half past 11 and I didn't wake up or didn't get up until half past nine. Now that's a long sleep for me. Um, I don't, I normally only have seven to eight hours a night. And I think that is probably where my sleep was a bit broken. Um, so I guess for about, you know, for hundred pound a night, I'd like a, a little bit of a, a nicer base to that bed. Other thing that I just want to show you quickly is in the bathroom. Let's have a look, see. So this is about the shower. And because of the way things are positioned, you need to get in and get right down the far end before you can turn it on. Now, I don't know whether that water is going to come out scalding hot or freezing cold. And whichever it is, I've then got to get out of the way and then get back in there and get underneath it and twiddle with it, try and get the temperature right. So basically I ended up having a strip wash at the sink because I just didn't trust the shower. The other thing I should say is that last night I just went out and had a couple of beers and I was doing a bit of work on the phone. And by the time I looked up, it was a bit too late to get anything to eat. So I skipped dinner last night and had a look this morning at the breakfast, it's 17 pound 50. Um, which for my money uh, is a little bit steep seeing as that's not included on my business expenses. So I won't be having breakfast um, here. I'll probably just grab something cheap in town on the way. Um, but look, the, the standard of foods, there's plenty of reviews out there. Um, I, I saw a couple of bits coming in and out last night. It looked pretty good to be fairly honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's just not in my, my price point. I'm gonna crack on now folks, go and get myself a bus back into town. Nice and cheap, like I said yesterday, two pound for 10 miles or nine and a half miles. Whereas down in South East England, it's three quid for three miles. Cool, we are expensive down there. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to crack on and we will go and have a little look see around. And at some point today, I'll be getting myself a train back down home and finishing off the work that I've got to do. All right, peeps, in a minute. In true Colombo style, one more thing about this room. So when you come in, you have to lock the door from the inside, otherwise it's still open when it shuts. And when you go out, you need to use the key to double lock it when you go out. If you just shut the door, it can just be opened again. Nobody said anything about that to me, but actually just shutting the door doesn't lock it from either side. So you must lock it from the inside, lock it from the outside. Right, come on, let's do this. So this is the pub that I came and had a beer in last night. 
It's literally about a three minute walk from the hotel, come out of the hotel, and it was turn right, <laughs> and then just take your first left, and it was five pound for a pint in there as opposed to six pound 75 in the hotel. So worth a three minute walk. Got loads of TVs on, so they had the England and Spain, no, not England and Spain, the Spain-France game last night. You can see they've got a nice garden out the back there as well, plenty of outside seating. And then just through here, I'm gonna head back up towards the hotel. There's like a lovely little market street. Very pretty little village to come and visit if you're staying in, in and around Doncaster area. And you're actually really close to the South Yorkshire Wildlife Centre, Wildlife Park, which is the only place in England now where you can see polar bears. The shoe shop there and then a little boutique that I've just passed, clothing shop. And as you come out, back onto the main drag. And just over there is the bus stop to take me back into town. And then the Crown Hotel is just over there on the corner. So all within just a few minutes walk of each other. Right folks, let's find this bus. station at Doncaster so you come up to this main information board all the destinations there are listed A to Z and then you just find the number of the stop that you want so I was at B3 and then literally you wander over to B3 you've got the screen up in the corner there that tells you what the next bus is and then you can see a list of all the buses that go from that stop and then all of the major stops that they actually stop at on there as well. So it, it was really easy. All the buses are contactless as well, so you don't have to worry about that. And then you've also got the shopping centre where there's plenty of places to eat. This is what links the bus station to the train station. So you're not going to be left wanting if you just want to have a wander around for a bit. There is loads and loads of shops in here as well. So it's a perfect place to waste a bit of time if you've got to wait between your train and your bus. And so there we have it, folks. That is our overnight at uh, Doncaster the birthplace of Jeremy Clarkson. More importantly, the birthplace of Jeremy Clarkson's mum, who created the Paddington Bear here and gave one to young Jezza so that he could go on and become a millionaire maker, a petrol head, a farmer, the master of the Markle debacle, Doncaster, the home of Thomas Crapper, the inventor of the modern flushing toilet, that had to be number one or number two on the list, the oldest race course in the UK, and the only place in England where you can see polar bears. Doncaster, it's got a lot going on folks. Latest potatoes, off your pop. 